Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Jess Hilarious is here. She's hey, back. Yeah. Hey. And let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Tess. Good morning, DJ Envy. The queen is here. Yes, the queen yes. of the throne, Jess Hilarious. Hey, girl. And, of course, Charlemagne the Guy. Peace, Ted. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Let's jump right into it. Uh, Biden. He, 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 yesterday, he went to Israel, right? Yeah, he arrived in Israel. And again, this story is changing literally by the minute. Uh, We just had some updated coverage maybe about 20 or 30 minutes ago. Uh, He arrived in Israel for a high stakes trip that comes after the deadly Gaza hospital blast that fueled protests across the Middle East and threatened to derail diplomatic efforts. Now, while President Biden was on his way to Israel, as I just mentioned, uh, a lot of this uh, happened last night. There were a lot of finger pointing on who is responsible for the blast. Uh, Palestinian officials blame uh, Israelis and it was Israelis strike airstrikes uh and the palestinian and of course israel said that palestinian uh that it was a palestinian jihad group that is responsible for a failed rocket launch uh, i was watching this probably all up until 12 or one o'clock in the morning um mm-hmm. you know as they were going back and forth while president biden was on the plane uh but then he uh landed and this is what he had to say he's taking a very firm position i guess after looking at the footage uh that uh israel put out here's what he had to say I was deeply sad and outraged by the uh explosion at the hospital in Gaza yesterday. And based on what I've seen, it appears as though it was done by the other team, not not you. But there's a lot of people out there not sure. So we got a lot we got to overcome a lot of things. Is it smart for Joe Biden to be in Israel at a time like this? No. Like why go to a country in the midst of war? No. And why tell people you're going to the country in the midst of war? Makes no you, sense. Even if you want to go, like why tell everybody you're going? Mm-hmm. I agree. And uh, it, it almost derailed the trip, you know, at, because this happened while he was, you know, uh, preparing to be on his way. Uh, and then he showed up anyway and they canceled some meetings that was all over the news yesterday because this was supposed to be a diplomatic meeting. And then when that happened and people trying to figure out who did what, you know, it did slow down the trip. And then he went and I agree. Is this really the safest thing to do? But now what people are talking about again about this statement he just made, he just really just, uh, you know, as American president just said, you know, who he believes as far as this uh, strike is concerned which people shouldn't be con- confused because uh, Israel is an ally uh, for America. So he is, you know, aligning with his allies. But that is what everybody's talking about this morning. And I want to say this uh, to our listeners as we continue to cover um, this war, because obviously it's not going anywhere. This is not an, an overnight thing. Um, this is happening in real time. Like I just mentioned, this just came out about an hour. Shout out to Taylor for pulling the clips uh, at the last minute like this. So by the time folks see this, Charlemagne, on YouTube, and by the time they get this, this information might change. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing my best to try to stay on top of this. Please follow me on my Instagram. I also have a broadcast channel on my Instagram and I'll be trying to put information there as well. And then I had uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Lamont Hill on the podcast this week as well, where we talked about black solidarity and took the conversation mm-hmm. even further that you guys did yesterday, which you did a great job on that, by the way. So, so they still haven't figured out who blew up the hospital because Palestinians and Israelis are blaming each other, right? So they still haven't yes, figured it out. But then you that's just said correct. that they, they released some footage that shows something different. Is that true? Is that what you said? Well, that's what is from what I heard last night, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning. Um, they said they were going to be releasing the evidence. And so Joe Biden apparently has looked at that evidence. And mm. I can't confirm that based on because, again, I just got this maybe right. about an hour or so ago. So uh, based on he said what he saw. Uh, he believes it's for the other team. But then you heard him say at the end, a lot of people disagree with that. So I I can't say for sure if he saw it and and what that looks like. What a confusing statement from the president of the United States of America. Right, Like, like, why speak on it if that's what the best you got? I can make a statement like that. Yeah, and and, and another thing I want to ask you, too, is, you know, with the president saying that he's actually going to Israel, right, and, and there's a war going on, can't they send hundreds of missiles at that plane? Uh, like I guess like, it's always does that make sense? Like, yeah, I'm coming yeah. into a war zone where I'm standing from yeah. one side, and they just that would absolutely positively not be the smartest thing to do, right? They would they would take that country off the map if they if they shot at the president of the United States. You think they America. care? Uh, they probably don't care. But you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, do, do they care? But he, 
He's well protected in the air. You can rest assured that. Shout out to my United States Air Force. Uh, I know in the that's building. right, but, says, yeah, yeah, shout out to, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, big place I am, United States Air Force. But oh, um, yeah, so yeah, no, they, they wouldn't make it. I, I can assure Man. you that. Like, Charlamagne's right about that. They'll, they'll take you off the map. So, But mm. it's still not the wisest thing to do. You know, I don't, you really don't really need the president of the United States. But again, he has to go to show solidarity. I and mean, there is a strong, mm. yeah, uh, obviously yeah. strong uh, solidarity with Israel, as you guys <laughs> He definitely did a zoom. He could have did a zoom. He could have did a zoom. Did a zoom. <laughs> the check's going the check going to clear regardless. So, mm, well, I think yeah. we sending the money their way though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. By the way, they're working on an eight billion dollar package, uh, and you know more money to come that will be going in Israel. And, and unfortunately, Congress is in shambles, or big shambles, using Jess's word, big yes. shambles right now. Mm-hmm. We're trying to figure out how to get that done, and we're going to talk about that in the next hour. All right. Well, that is front page news. Get it off your chest. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have Jess Hilarious here. Hey, And y'all. let's get in some front page news. Now, where are we starting, Tess? <laughs> well, good morning, DJ NV. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, yeah. Jess Larry, Charlemagne, the guy. They're passing notes in class, Tess. I want you to know that. You trying to do no, your stuff, and they're passing notes no, in class. No, because I was, I was, showing, I was showing Jess how Christina Aguilera said she hope her and Britney Spears good. Right, because she's still... Because she know still... Britney got a book. <laughs> 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 like, let me make sure we good. You see them passing notes? I wish notes. I had nothing but blessings. I see them passing notes. Morning, I love it when Jess is here, by the way. You trying to conduct class this morning, and they passing notes. See that? Sorry. We over being serious trying to do the news, they passing notes. What's up, Tess? What are you talking with these Republicans? Yes, DJ Envy. We're going to start with Representative Jim Jordan. Uh, There's still, we talked about a little bit yesterday, so I have to kind of give you, keep keep giving you updates on the Speaker of the House. They tried to vote him in. Didn't happen. He failed on the initial round after 20 of his fellow Republicans voted against him. But Jim Jordan said he's going to keep going. Let's listen to what he had to say. We're going to keep going. I've had great conversations, great discussions with uh, our colleagues. And frankly, no one... No one in our conference wants to see any type of coalition government with Democrats. So we're going to keep working, and we're going to get to the votes. How many, uh, many ballots are you willing to go through? Until we get a speaker. we got we got to have a speaker, and it can't be some deal with the Democrats. I, I mean, American people don't want that. They elect Republicans in a majority. Small majority, I get it. He should learn from Kevin McCarthy when stuff like this happens, because if they got to keep voting, they don't really want you. So when you finally mm-hmm. do get the position, it ain't like you got no damn power. Right. Kind of like a bad relationship. You're going to force force the relationship. on. But I, I want to bump back up and make sure y'all heard what he said. We will not be working with a coalition with Democrats. Mm-hmm. So they are making it very he's making it very clear. Jim Jordan makes it very clear. They're not interested in working with Democrats. So I don't know, Charlamagne, how much work they're going to get done. You know, once they vote him in, I don't think much. Uh, but I want to make sure you guys heard that. And then for those who don't know who Jim Jordan is, uh, he is a heavy Trump supporter, MAGA supporter. And uh, he was in the news uh, during the after the January 6th insurrection where he struggled to answer the question on if he tr- talked to Trump or not. So I wanted to bump that clip back up so you can know exactly who will possibly be in charge of uh, the Republican Party in the House of Representatives. Let's take a listen. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go. I, 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 I spoke with him that day after, I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, I just don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and. I, I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know uh, th- that w- when when those conversations happened. But um, but uh, what I know is I spoke with him all the time. Did that? Were you convinced by that answer? No. <laughs> okay. Well, white boy, well that is- politicians always sound like they're lying to me. So. Right. <laughs> well, that definitely doesn't sound too convincing. And folks may be asking, well, why does this matter? Well, because the House does not have a speaker uh, for the last two weeks. They ousted Kevin McCarthy, which was historic, did not have a uh, backup plan. And again, we have major things going on. We're in the middle of a government funding deadline that will happen in November. Obviously, there's still crisis in Ukraine. Now we have the war in Israel with Hamas. And again, Republicans can't figure out who should lead their party. It's so interesting that, you know, we're telling the world how to um, handle their business but yet literally they cannot decide on who would uh, who should be in charge of the republican party which has a majority of congress by the way which is uh, quite embarrassing in my opinion all right so another vote is scheduled today at 11 a.m and we'll see how that goes all right well let's jump right to las vegas what happened in las vegas 
Yeah, I don't know if this belongs in Donkey of the Day, uh, but it is mm -hmm. It is some news that I thought you guys may want to know. A Las Vegas police officer gets 12 years in prison for robbing casinos. Uh, he was sentenced Tuesday to 12 years in federal prison for stealing over $165,000 in a trio of casino heists, including one where he was found guilty of brandishing a department-issued weapon. So just so in case you didn't hear that, he used his police weapon to rob a casino. Uh, Khalid Rod Rogers is his name, and he has been on unpaid suspension while they try to figure out, you know, what they should do, which is, I think that's quite odd. Uh, it's been nearly 20 months that he's been on unpaid suspension. He did apologize after the sentencing. He said he understands his mistakes, and the judge said uh, that he understood that he had a gambling addiction and financial troubles, and the judge appeared to be kind of sympathetic by saying he credited him with his service to community but you know still gave him that time so i thought that was an interesting story you don't really hear about police officers robbing you know getting they set it off on but this police officer did that is that reminds me of dead presidents but that is crazy <laughs> like because how, how did he even get caught though like how yeah he robbed one casino for seventy three thousand. Then he did a second one for thirty thousand. Then he said, "Let me keep going." He did another one for eleven thousand, and he was caught on the fourth one. He shoved a sixty year old woman out the way. He uh, put about eighty bag, uh, eighty thousand in his bag, and then when he ran out, he was tackled by the the guards, and his wig flipped off. Literally, this is what they said in the article. Oh his wig flipped off, went flying in the air, uh, and then they were able to recover the money, and that's how he got caught. Um, wow. But I like how they put that little He shoved the 60 year old lady He, he ain't do nothing He just pushed the over pride a little bit That is so funny <laughs> 60 is not even that old 60 ain't old He's at all. He shoved the 60 year old woman out the way <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I like how they put that This wig went flying in right, the air Right sure. What race is it? Yeah, what race guess what is race it? Is. <laughs> guess what Yeah, Want to play a game guys? Please Definitely Please. white Please Yep, I was about to say he white But black men be having two pays I was ready to say too. no I ain't gonna say white I'm gonna say black What was he? White. He was a white guy. Yeah. Oh my like, god. Oh my god. I just keep thinking of Lorenz Tate and Dead President. Oh my god. And I throw the chair. Oh my god. All, All right. right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tiz. Absolutely. And make sure you subscribe to Tesla and Figaro's podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network, and follow at Tesla and Figaro on all social media platforms. All right. When we come back, Nicole Avant will be joining us. She has a new book. Think you'll be happy, man. Mo moving through grief with grit, grace, and gratitude. Anybody out there that's uh, dealing with grief on any level, which we all do to some extent, right? Uh, some some worse than others. This is the book that you need to be reading and you need to hear Nicole's story. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.